felt that one. You ever have to get out of the way of any of these freighters coming through? <laughs> Always. Yeah, you got to be careful of those big guys. You can barely see him off into the distance there. You see the little boat sitting in front of him. Yeah. I'll tell you what, with this fog, I sure couldn't see where we're going, but I see we're in about 71 foot of water. That's right. First time I had the inshore rods over here on the uh, west coast of this deep. What can we expect? I mean, basically the hit of these fish. Well, pretty good fight. Probably one of the tastiest fish that we have uh, we have to offer here in the Gulf of Mexico. I can promise you that. All right, cool. Just waiting for the thump. The drop off here on the Gulf is like, what, almost like a foot or two foot every mile? How far out are we now? We're about, uh, we're about 18 miles southwest of Tampa Bay, uh, very close to the shipping channel. Um, we're trying to follow the migration of these, these fish along with the snappers, mangoes, hog snappers is our key fish. Now the hogs, I, I read something where they're all the way from Nova Scotia, which is way, way up north, all the way down to the north part of uh, South America. That's, uh, that's, what, uh, that's what online says, and I believe they're deep water fish they, to a shallow water fish. It's uh, found on hard bottom. Fish on. Blair, I, I think this is the one here, buddy. Let's see. Oh yeah, beautiful. God, those things are pretty. Beautiful awesome. hog snapper. It's a big one too, Blair. Oh, they do have some teeth, huh? Get him in his gills. Let's grab his body and get him in. There he is. Wow. Now that's a pretty fish, brother. I cannot wait to get one of those. Ooh. Stay in the boat, stay in the boat. <laughs> well, welcome to this episode of Addictive Fishing. We are off Tampa Bay, got Captain Ryan Farner with us, and we are absolutely going through a ton of fish to catch our targeted species today, which is actually a hog snapper, hogfish. What else do you call them, delicious? Delicious. The only way I've ever caught these has been spearfishing them down in the Keys, and uh, the one I got was not near that size, but man, what a beautiful, beautiful looking fish. Is this the male or female? This is the male. This, this is, is the male. This is, is the a, male. Starting on the stages of a bigger male. You know, I did a little reading on them this morning. Actually, on the way over, my camera guy was reading off Wikipedia on these things, and they use that nose just like a hog rooting around in the sand, and uh, that's why they call them hogfish. Beautiful fish, what and uh, fish. even better eating. If they taste as good as they look, that's it's right. going to be good. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back, right off Tampa Bay, Captain Ryan Farner, and some hogfish. All right. I couldn't imagine what one of them big 20 plus pounders would fight like. Let's hope we get one. Well, welcome back folks. We still got the fog, seagulls, and we're still dropping down for these hog snapper. Hopefully, I can show you one because I cannot wait to catch one of these guys. The only thing I've ever done is, is spear them. You know, is it, what kind of bottoms down here on these things? We're fishing 70 foot of water, natural hard bottom, live coral bottom. Uh, oh, so it is coral. live coral, huh? There's some live coral in here. Uh, limestone, natural relief, like a break. Um, you, you, want, you want the bottom to be nice and live, no sand. Yeah. Cool. And the hogfish just get down there and root for the crustaceans and crabs? They and... do. They live, their, their home is, is their territory, which is right there you know, amongst the break or the, the piece of bottom that you're actually fishing. Yeah. So if you were going to target them, you want to fish hard bottom, live bottom, and, uh, and look for a not, not a, not a huge fish show, but you want to see some life on your machine. That's always good when you see some life on the hummingbird, huh? That's right. <laughs> cool beans. Right on the break. Come on, come on, come on. Come, 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 come. Where is it? There we go. Feels a little different. Oh, I know he's not that big. Might be one of the littler ones. Might fight like it. It's red. Right 
Oh, it is one. Check that out. It's a female. That's what the females are, huh? That's it. Well, that's my, that's my first hog snapper <laughs> or hog fish on hook and line. I still got a big wide mouth, even though that's a female. That's right. Not as a more, not as, oh, not as a profound snout as the male, but, and the colors are a little bit lighter as yeah. well, more pink to him. And he doesn't, do, she doesn't have the brown hard snout on him. Yeah, or the, or the length of that snout from that oh, other one. Right. Man, that's still a fish. tasty. Now is, that a, is that a keeper? What's the size limit on it? After 12 inches. After 12? We'll let this one go. I always say, hey, if you got to measure them, let them go. Now that one's got the spot. And you say just the, what? I don't know, where I was reading it said just the males have the spots, but I guess I'm wrong on that one because sometimes they always have spots, right? I, I tend to notice every one of them, every hog snapper I catch has spots or a profound spot like this one does right here. Cool. Well, let's get this one back in the water. Grew up to be, uh, grew up to be, be a big male. To be a mogan. Yeah. Go ahead and change sexes there, buddy. <laughs> Man, that's a big nasty. That's a good hook. Great hook. See you later, dude. Grow up and be a mogan one day. Keep it down there. And she's gone. My first hog fish on the hook. Congratulations. And I think I'll go for another. <laughs> yeah, he hit that little shrimp. Little live one. The dead ones I popped the head off. Come on, come on, hoggy, eat it, eat it, eat it. There, ooh, there he is. Oh, he's digging it. Man, it's quite a fish. Look at that. Aren't you used to fighting kingfish though? <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> this might be what we're looking for here. I mean, either that or it's another gag grouper. Whatever it is, it's, it's decent. There's some color. Oh, so nice gag. Sure ain't no it ain't. fish, is it? No. <laughs> Look at that. There nice one is. on this light tackle. You got him? Yeah. Show him off and Oh. <laughs> and just, just kind of wish it was grouper season, right? Look at his belly. He's full. He's been eating. And then they're eating all our shrimp. Yeah, reach that guy. I don't need to get all cut up. The big nasty does its trick on the old Gaglioni grouper. Now, what's the difference between these and, say, the uh, black? Well, this is what we call our generic black here, and where we're fishing out of Tampa Bay, or a lot of people call them the gag grouper. Uh, it's not a true black. A true black is called a carburita, and he's got more definitive lines and markings. Yeah, like, um, we've got iridescent colors in them, too. Correct. Uh, beautiful fish all together. There he goes. And we're shallow enough now. They swim right back down. You don't got to vent them. Right. And if they do float up, we can catch them venom. Hey, it's been through about how many baits now? Uh, probably 10 dozen shrimp. <laughs> and we got a couple to show you. Y'all stick around, we're gonna hopefully show you some more of those big hog snapper. Hog fish, hog snapper, whatever you wanna call them. Good eats. Good eats. We'll be right back. Yeah, they're all about like that. They're in here spawning. The bigger ones are about three miles to the west of here. Well, welcome back, folks. You can see the fog's lifting a little bit. We can see our ships coming in now, at least. I'm not just hearing them. And uh, Ryan just went over an awesome spot on the hummingbird, lit it up like crazy, and sent them on down and see what we can do. It's like boom, boom, as soon as it hits the bottom, isn't it? Uh-oh. There he is. Not already. There he is. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hit the bottom. Oh. Uh-oh. Get the drag puller right there. <sighs> feel like the man? Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> that feels like the good man there, huh? That's right. Inshore tackle, offshore. That's awesome. I got to give this a shot on the East Coast and just see if we got them on those ledges over I there on the A-Day. 
Might even catch some of them lionfish we got over this there. This is either going to be a big hog or a grouper. And you know what, Blair? It's looking hoggy. It's looking real hoggy. I can hear him, hear him? Oh, it's a big hog. Big hog. <laughs> big hog. Mr. Beautiful. Hoggy. Man, they just kind of like give up, don't they? <laughs> that was awesome. What a beauty fish right there. Hog snapper, the targeted species right off of Tampa Bay. Unbelievable, 72 feet of water right now. Cool fish. Well, what do you say we uh, get repositioned? I hit my uh, spot lock, got us off the spot. So go put the spot lock back. You got it. Put this guy in and uh, we'll catch another. Tiny old double shrimp rig on the trocar. We're gonna send it way on down and see if it can uh, get eaten by a hog. Man, when it hits the bottom, be on it immediately because they'll follow it right down and next thing you know, it's boom, boom, boom. Ryan, I've, I've never seen a TV show done on hogfish. How, you know, it had to be tough to figure out. 40 dozen shrimp at a time. <laughs> right, I, I think that was the biggest uh, key component is being able to uh, put the time in with the shrimp and, uh, and really just strictly fish with that. Not cut bait, not pin fish, not live bait or anything else because you don't want to attract the groupers. You don't want to attract anything else. You, you want him down there sniffing, rooting around on the bottom. Well, you've and, you've uh, always known the hogfish have been here. It's just trying to figure out how to, there he right. is. That's it. Oh, there's your hoggy. There he is, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hogfish. That's what we're looking for. Oh, man. When he decided to take off, hang on, let me get around this side. There we go. Man, when he decided to take off, brother. <laughs> oh, buddy. He went. Oh. This, is a, this is a big hog. This is the one you wanted. Finally, the a one. male. We'll be catching all those little ones. Nice wow. job. Little guy like that, bent over his eight foot rod like that. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, bro, that is an absolute beautiful, beautiful fish. Nice job. Definitely my biggest one. I want to show this guy off here to the camera. Look at that. Get that show car out of there. Check this guy out, y'all. That fish has the biggest mouth I've ever seen on a fish. I mean, look at that. And they're in the, you say they're in the Rass family, Rass right? Rass family, correct. And uh, they use that big mouth to its advantage when he's coming up, opens it up like a parachute. Now with all the limitations in fish, I mean, over on the East Coast, we got sea bass that gets closed all the time now. Red snapper's been closed forever. Grouper season gets closed. And uh, if you put your time in and figure these things out, watch what we're doing today, you can come out and catch these guys right here and they are better eaten than any grouper you have ever put on your taste buds, guaranteed. Awesome right. fish. Well, Good job. What do you say we get another? Let's get another. <laughs> spot lock still spot. Yeah. Is that the man? Oh, he's coming over here. Come on. And that's the eight footer. <laughs> hogfish, hogfish rooting around. I don't know if I've said this yet or not, but the reason they're called hogfish is because they take that snout and they dig in that sand and they're digging up crustaceans and that mouth, I guess, is big enough to eat a big crab and whatnot. They are a neat looking fish. Well, I got some color. I can't make out what it is yet. Oh, oh you did it again. What, another gag? Another beautiful hogfish. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that oh, one. That's a nice one. Wow. I want to show this guy's mouth off because they are absolutely incredible. 
and down right here so you can see them good. These things, I swear, have got to be one of the prettiest fish I've ever caught. Now, one thing that's really cool about these, it's got to be these teeth right here. You know what that looks like? Toothpicks. I, well, I caught, a sheep, <laughs> I caught a California sheep's head when I was out there last year and uh, almost had teeth similar to that. And they're, they're a fish that also changes back and forth from male to female. Oh, right. I don't know if you've ever seen one Does of Does it those. start as a female or a male? I have no idea. But uh, these all start as females from what I read, right? Right. Absolutely incredible fish. What is the neatest thing is how that mouth opens up. That's right. <laughs> That's a nice one. So what do you say we uh, put this guy in a cooler and get rigged up? Uh, one thing, though, uh, we haven't talked about. What is the size limit on these? Uh, they start at 12 inches. And it's 10 per person. And, 10 per uh, person. 10 per person. Um, I bet that changes <laughs> soon. Right. I don't like to keep the small ones. Yeah. Um, I always say, if, if you, if you got to measure them, throw them back. Throw them back. Grow up. Let them grow up. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back. Re-rigged and catching another hoggy. Rig it right by Wright and Miguel. Now, I met Captain Ryan up at a photo shoot in Destin and how fish heads always do when we got together we started talking about the fishery and he happened to tell me about a new fishery that he's kind of tapped into and it happened to be the hogfish and it really interested me a lot because they're a pretty unique fish. Hogfish or hog snapper whatever you want to call them they're not even a snapper at all they're actually in the wrasse family and if you look up wrasse just says it's a reef dwelling fish. They're absolutely beautiful fish. They have one of the most unique mouths of any fish I've ever seen in my life. It can actually open up to where it's almost 180 degrees open. And the teeth on them, their dorsal fin with the, what I call the, the huggy bear dorsal fin up there. Man, what a beautiful, beautiful looking fish. They put up a good fight at first and it's a really a different fight. As soon as you hook one, it feels like a grouper digging down, but if you've ever had your line wrap around, say, a sea fan, it kind of vibrates. Oh, that's a hoggy. See him? Yeah. See how he's doing that? I kind of like it. If you've ever been sheephead fishing, it's a lot like that. Double shrimp rig. Ryan, he's been going through 30 dozen shrimp at a time, and he says the best bait out there for him are the little land crabs. We call them fiddler crabs or the sand fleas that you can get right off the beach. He says those are some of the best. Highly recommended if you get a chance. Go see Captain Brian Farner. Remember one thing, though. Every fishing season starts right here at Dick's. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. So Ryan, what'd you tell me you call this place? Hoggy Land. Hoggy Land. Oh, well, maybe not. Oh, that's a hoggy. See him? Yeah. See how he's doing that? <laughs> Is it a hog? I think so. We're gonna find out here in a second. Yeah, he's doing his characteristic of it. Kind of pinwheeling up a little bit. Nice hoggy. Bring okay. him right to you. Female, oh, female nice female. Too. That'd be a good one. You know what, dude? <laughs> Since I think we're about out of time and have caught all these fish today, we can show the female off. Don't throw him in the water. Show you how much different. <laughs> Don't throw him in the water. <laughs> Here, this guy, he keeps more fish than I do. But uh, that's the female. As you can tell, it's a lot different than the other ones we've been catching, which have been the big males. And I'll tell you what, they absolutely fight. If you'll ever get a chance to do this, you, got, you guide on this, right? Absolutely. What's Absolutely. your website? CaptainRyanFarner.com. F-A-R-N-E-R. -E you got Captain it. CaptainRyanFarner.com, or you can go to our Facebook. You'll be all over that, I'm sure, talking, and uh, especially our Google Plus site. Go there and tell us how, how you did on your hog snapper when you came out to Tampa Bay. Mr. Farner, definitely appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank One you. One awesome fish. You put me on something I've never caught before in my life, which is... Uh, getting kind of rare these days. <laughs> my, my career is getting up there right. in a few years. But There's always uh, a first for everything. Always a first. Y'all ever get a chance to do this? It is a lot of fun, and you get to keep 10 of them right now. So, And they're probably the best eating fish I've ever done. Don't forget about the website, addictivefishing.com. Go to our Google Plus site. Definitely send us some pictures of these fish you're out here catching. Hope you enjoyed the new Skeeter as much as I did today. We'll see you next week. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers.
Well, welcome back, folks. We're <clears throat> still out here in the fall. <clears throat> Damn, I'm gonna swallow the glue. <clears throat> I cannot wait to get one of those. Ooh. Stay in the boat, stay in the boat. <laughs> ah. Is this one an upgrade? Oh, oh yeah! Oh, 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 o